let's get into it. Soul Not For Sale podcast. I got Joe Rogan talking about something that I didn't realize. I don't know if you have fallen victim to this as well, but there has been a bit of a memory block around 2020. You would think that people would talk about what happened more more often. You think we would become ever vigilant of local government and who's going to be put in place and what their takes are on, you know, if there is another pandemic of sorts, what will they do? What do they endorse happening? You think we would stay ever vigilant, like that we'd have this mentality of never again, never again, not like that. But for some reason, there is, as his guest puts it, this amnesia surrounding that whole event. We forget what was happening in Australia, what was happening in China, what was happening in Canada, what was happening in America. The stores got boarded up. And a lot of places, mom and pop places, closed down. And we've just kind of forgotten about all that. Let's get into that a little bit. That's what Joe Rogan and his guests are talking about. Don't forget about the new channel I got, Coach Call in Media, where I break away from the Rogan content and we start doing our own thing. I got about 31, 32 videos up there. We're posting about twice a day, two to four times a day. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Now let's get into this Rogan clip. Deciding that some of the smartest people on earth shouldn't be allowed to talk because they don't fit this narrative that we all need to follow in order to survive. I'm hoping that most people woke the fuck up after that. And even if you went along with it in the beginning and you haven't apologized or you haven't consented to the fact that you were incorrect, even, even if you haven't, you haven't just accepted it entirely, you, there's a part of you that knows the world got fucked yeah. over. There's a part of you that knows. So when some more nonsense comes around, maybe hold the line a little better this time. Yeah. And maybe next time when you're forced to adhere to very specific rules that are, are, are designed to save us from whatever thing that they have going on, whether it's like starvation. We have to give all the farms over to the government because uh, we can't allow people to decide how much food gets made and how much. Yeah, then you have North Korea. Yeah, then that's that's it's a slippery fucking slope, kids. But it's it's interesting to hear you say that, Joe, because one thing I've realized with COVID-19 is that there's this real culture of amnesia has set in. I was yeah. thinking about this recently. I was thinking when I hang out with friends and family members and have a drink or whatever, I was thinking it's really weird. No one ever talks about lockdown. You know, when you meet friends, right, uh, you will say, do you remember that thing that happened five years ago? Do you remember that thing? that you, you kind of go down memory lane and you talk about things that happened in the past. I was thinking it's so interesting that so few of the normal people I know, so not people in the media, not people who are on podcasts, not people who are involved in political discussion like, like we are, normal people never go down the memory lane of, of lockdown and COVID. They, it's like it's become this black spot in people's minds. And yeah. I think it's because um, people don't like what they became during that period. They don't like what became of their societies. They feel an element of shame, I think, that our societies so speedily turned from being relatively free to being completely dictatorial to the extent that we were told when we could leave our house. Where and we were we ratting on each other. And we were ratting on each other. We became snitches. It was a snitcher culture as well. Um, you know, and even I have had uh, elements of amnesia setting in. So I, every now and then I remember things that happened in the UK, like, um, you know, people, the, the, the authorities put yellow tape on park benches so that you wouldn't be able to sit on a bench. <laughs> there was one incident where they used, the police used drones to spy on people walking their dogs uh, to make sure that they weren't walking their dog more than once a day. And even oh I... I God. I suddenly have flashes of memory and I have to kind of Google to make sure that these things actually happened. Like it's arresting like, people in Australia, just tackling them because they didn't yeah, have masks on. Right. And and it's like um it's like the Tiananmen Square phenomenon to a certain extent. Or that's forced amnesia. That's the government saying, look, we are going to force you to forget that incident in yeah, 1989. We it. don't want you to remember it, so we're going to black it out. This is a more voluntary form of euthanasia. It's not actually a, a boot on the neck saying you must misremember all this stuff. It's more voluntary, but it's a similar process where we feel, I think, such shame or horror or bewilderment at what became of our societies and our willingness to let it happen that the only way we can deal with it is to pull over this comfort blanket of amnesia and to forget about it so it, it, I, I think when people look back on the lockdown moment i do think they will ask how was it so easily enforced why did so many people accept it why did this chinese idea and we all accept that china is an authoritarian state why did that spread so quickly to italy and then the united kingdom and then to america how did this stuff happen yeah, and how did no one recognize it? Yeah. And everyone sort of complied. Even public intellectuals fearfully complied 
didn't didn't in any way question that maybe maybe this is like every other time that something big has come up. You've been lied to. Well, you know, Neil Ferguson from Imperial College, who was one of the, the modelers of COVID-19, a pretty controversial guy because his models for what would happen with the disease if we didn't lock down, they informed the actions of governments across Europe, especially the British government. Um, he gave an interview to the Times newspaper a couple of years ago in which he had this really interesting line where he said, we saw what was happening in China and we never thought we could get away with it here. But then we did. And it was just such an interesting turn of phrase. Now, he might, he might not have meant it, but it was so revealing of their, the mindset of people in power in the United Kingdom. And the United Kingdom is a, is a nation in which I would argue the modern idea of freedom was born there. Press freedom, the, the right to vote, the, the freedom of speech, all of those things are such central ideals to the history of the United Kingdom. And yet we allowed this tyranny to wash over us. We allowed dissent to be crushed. We allowed people to be locked into their homes. We allowed park benches to be covered up with yellow tape. And, and the question of why and how that happened is one, it's a reckoning that we're not prepared to have yet, but we need to have it. You hear what's happening in Brazil right now? What's happening in Brazil? In Brazil, they are trying to... There's a dictatorship in Brazil. We went over that a little bit. I'm actually going to be bringing people an update on that. And I'm going to try and do at least weekly updates, probably twice a week updates on what's going on in Brazil. That's going to be on the other channel. Again, just to break away from the Rogan content a little bit. Plus, what's going on there is absolutely horrendous. I did an episode just the other day about a judge who actually stood up to the current regime and he disappeared for a while and came back with all these marks and just like he'd been beaten about the face and honestly i left it out of the video because it it was getting too graphic but there have been multiple government officials who stood up and then disappear and then come back with different injuries and they're all just like oh i fell oh the bathroom oh i just slipped Whew. And it's said that the current president has a connection to, I don't know if it's cartel or organized crime, something within Brazil that is very violent. He has direct connection to it. So it makes sense that these people are popping up that way because he actually has the means to send people in the cover of night to go and do that sort of thing. It's wild over there. Now, going back to the amnesia, I think it's, I think it's two things. If you... If you didn't go through anything, like if you worked from home and you just worked online and did it really affect you all that much? Kind of, but not as much for me. And I'd love to know, you know, usually I have like a whole bunch of clips and everything, but I would love to know from you guys what you experienced during that time. And not just that, how you actually felt. I would love to know that. That is like, he's right. It's a conversation that we should be having. I know for me, it sticks out a lot because I lost my job. I worked in the most in that, and that's my fault. I worked in the most left-leaning industry you can possibly work in, and that's, <clears throat> sorry, film and television. So right away, it was like, done. And then it got to the point where they wanted people to do the thing. I was one of the people that was not willing to do the thing, and didn't matter if you were on set or not, around actors or not. If you weren't, then you couldn't work. And I was just like, okay, I guess I'm just gonna go deliver food. And I started making maybe a fifth of what I was making before. And I was just getting by. I was just surviving. I couldn't add to what my wife was doing at all. It was such a demeaning process for me because I could no longer provide and help in the household. And I was out all day because I would deliver food for 12 hours a day. And they still didn't want me, they didn't want me to deliver food. They didn't want me to be out, but I was like, I have to be out. It was so weird. It was the, it was the weirdest situation. And, and, and I saw day by day where I would go into town or go into cities and one store would be closed and then you'd go back the next week and it's five on that block and then it's 10 and then it's a bunch and they never came back. So I saw it all happening. So it affected me drastically, affected me and my wife drastically. And then also I watched it affect the cities and I was able to go to the Walmarts and see the Walmarts be open. And just maybe I was gifted in the sense of I was outside every day so I could actually see it developing. Whereas if you're inside, you're just kind of closed inside. You can't see what's going on. I saw what was going on bit by bit by bit. And it was just more and more and more. And it just didn't make any sense. 
It was a terrible time. You know, just to think about, I have a friend in Australia. I know what they were going through. He couldn't leave his house. You couldn't go a certain uh, distance from your house. They do things in kilometers. And I believe it was like three kilometers, which is like not even two miles. It was, it was ridiculous. It was, I, I think that's, yeah, it's less than two miles. They couldn't be from their houses, you know? It was, it just didn't make any sense. It made no sense. And then what happened in China? I remember that just from social media. Day after day, you'd see people posting and there'd be these drones that would fly up amongst the apartment buildings and tell people to stay inside. Like drones shouting messages, the most Orwellian thing you could possibly think of. That was happening. And then we also, I don't know about you, we also saw footage of, you know, Chinese officials locking people, like welding up doors to make sure people didn't leave and then bringing them food. It, it was it was crazy to see. And the whole time you're watching, you're like, is that what's going to happen over here? Like, is that coming here? You know, and New Zealand was just wild because they got that. I think she's gone now, but their president or prime minister was actually a hardcore WEF member. And she was going along with everything to a T and then some. It was ridiculous. <sighs> it was a really any any. And the guy's right. We don't talk about it enough. You think people would talk about it more. I made the decision after seeing how Texas handle it, that that was the place to be. I was like, mm, it, it, see, they're nor like, listen, I love Rogan, but I, I wasn't following Rogan. I was just like, oh, you're going to be, oh, you're going to be able to be for the most part. We don't know how things are going to be in the future, but looking at it, it was like, they're doing shows. The restaurants are good. Everything seems normal there. It was like they're in Florida and I'm deathly afraid of snakes and crocodiles. So I was like, Texas it is. <laughs> I had no, you have no choice. You, uh, I, I can't handle the snakes and the alligators. And I know it's not like that. I have family in Florida. I have a lot of family in Florida. And they're like, that's a ridiculous fear, but it's still a fear. Okay. <laughs> so Texas was a place to be and that was it. But it was wild seeing what happened to people. And, and not even that. Like I lost... You lo I don't know about the rest of you. I lost friends. I lost a lot of friends where I couldn't even, you know, like I'm, I'm a hugger. You know, I hug my friends because I know how important that could be for people sometimes. You know, I have my wife. I have a kid. I get hugs all day. But some people don't. So I always make it a point to do that. And then all of a sudden I couldn't. You know, I have, a, I have, I have friends that I haven't seen in years because of it. You know? And there's still a little bit of it because I don't want to do the thing that they're like, mm, I don't know if I could see that person. They didn't do the thing. And it's like, <sighs> it's sad what happened, man. It's crazy what happened. Again, I would love to know what happened with you guys, what, what you were going through. What did you experience? Because, again, I was lucky. I was outside every day. I didn't want to be. I hated having to deliver food. and But every single day, I was just outside all day all day every day and 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 touching hundreds of doorknobs being in hundreds of elevators <laughs> interacting with hundreds of people everything that you're not supposed to do they're like ah it's fine if you do it and which also didn't make sense it's like ah well you're delivering food it's fine you're essential it was like okay i guess so isn't isn't just working and, and social interaction essential it's funny how that's not even essential Although it is to the human experience, it is to the human psyche to be able to interact with people and, and be normal. That is essential. But they were like, no, it's not anymore. Very odd. Very, very odd, man. But again, I, I want to know what you guys went through. What were you feeling? Because I went through a hard time financially. But again, I was able to be outside. There are some people who got so freaked out that they just wouldn't leave their place. They just, I know, I know someone who stayed in a house for two years, two years. And I'm not kidding. They would maybe come out to get packages and what they would do with packages. They put it in the garage and spray it and leave it for a week. What? It got to some people so bad 
and it's so unfair. Nobody ever had to. It's it's just it's just like the mainstream news. No one had to apologize. No one had to 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 get on any type of platform or news news outlet and say sorry for all this. We didn't know what to do, and we did the best we could. And you know we did it for you. You know, and you know that would all be a lie. But still, at least it would be something. At least it would be something. Nobody said anything, right? They never took anything back, which begs the question again: Why I say it's so important to talk about it? Are they going to do it again? Was all that normal to them? Did that seem like a good thing to do to them? Were they like that? Was we handled that spot on? Is that what they think? Because if it is, you know, there's some rethinking of the local government that has to happen. And it and, and it's not a left or right thing. It's a what are you going to do in this situation type of thing. And I wish they had to answer those questions. But if you do go and ask them one of those questions because they're at a place or, you know, a conference or something, you'll be seen as a crazy person. It's very weird. Very, very weird. And I know nobody answered for it in Australia or China. <laughs> China went China went into a lockdown in 2022. What? Yep. Anytime there was a surge of anything, they were like, ah, lockdown. Get inside now. Whew. It was the wildest thing to, to have to go through, you know? I wonder if it's going to happen again. I, but again, we don't talk about it. Like, I was just at a birthday party. One of my friend's kids. I was just at a birthday party. And one guy, I have a baby carrier. And he's like, oh, I wanted that one. And I'm like, oh, so you didn't get it? You couldn't find it? And he's like, oh, no, we were, you know, locked down. So I couldn't go and get it. But we didn't. That was it. It's not like we were like, oh, what happened to you during the lockdown? How did you feel during that time? Nobody, nobody talks about that. You know? And if you do talk about it. You're seen as like this right wing, <laughs> you're seen as a right wing extremist. You know, it's almost like you're just expected to get over it. I don't know, man. You know, I, I liken this blip, this amnesia to the same thing when it comes to the trucker convoy. There were no protests in Canada because bank accounts were frozen. No one said anything. Everyone just went, whoa, that's no good. Can't do that. What the heck? But no one, no one protested about it at all it's really really and here's the thing you would think these organizations blms all of those three letter organizations that are supposed to be for the people you think they would stand up at something like that they'd be like hey this is not a black thing but hey this is crazy you froze bank accounts you think that all these organizations would come out of the woodwork and start standing up but none of them do which shows how co-opted they all are. And I guess you can say the same thing about the news because they didn't push, pull back on anything or apologize. And how same thing with politicians, how co-opted it all is. They only stand up. They only make us aware of things that benefit them. But this is a thing that directly benefits the people or had a negative effect directly on the people. And nobody talks about it. You know? And it's something that happened to everybody. Everybody got hit. You were black, you were white, rich, poor. It hit everybody. And the thing that hits everybody doesn't get stood up for. And I feel like, in a way, that's because that would bring about too much unity. You know? Like, you remember after the towers were hit, there's unity afterwards. Everybody was like, American flags. People with blue hair, nose rings were like, America, you damn right. You know? The unity, bringing people together. They don't always want that. You would think that would be the main thing that they're after, but when you look at the news and you look at these organizations, it seems like the, that's the last thing they want. I don't know. But yeah, again, let me know what happened to you during that period. What happened? Do you regret what you had to do? Because some people had to do it. Do you regret, regret what you didn't do? Maybe. Although I haven't met any of those people. I'm one of those people and I don't regret it at all. Can't regret 
not doing something, <laughs> especially when your integrity is at stake. Not me. I don't regret it at all. Feel great. Could go for a run right now. No issues on me. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. You know, but if you had to, I'm sorry. If you regret it and you had to, I'm sorry. But um, yeah, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments, man. Because, you know, again, usually I have a bunch of clips and everything. But what do you remember? We should be talking about that more. Definitely. And you should be talking to your local government about that more. What 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 did you allow to happen to our city and why? And will you do it again now that you've been through it and you saw that perhaps it wasn't the best way? Do you have a different plan? Nobody's asking those questions. It's the news cycle as well pushes us forward there's no time to look back it's just go 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 by the time it hits saturday sunday monday new news cycle iran attacked israel we'll forget about that in a week what is it now what is it sunday two days from now people won't even be talking about it as much seems crazy but it's true anyways guys like subscribe share and have the conversation what do you remember about that time? What were you going through about that time? How did it affect you and your family? And has anybody apologized to you? I'm out.